All right, so we're in first gear. And if I let off the brake, you're gonna see we're gonna roll a little bit right there. So I'm gonna mash the trans brake button right now. As you see, the light's engaged. I'm gonna take my foot off of the brake and the truck is gonna stay put. I can floor the gas pedal right now if I want to and this truck will not move at all. I'll show you. That was 5,000 RPM and we didn't even flinch. So I'm gonna hold it down to about 2,000. I'm gonna let go of the button right now. Watch my thumb. And that's pretty much how it works. Very, very simple. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna let my camera guy get back. And I'm gonna drop this thing at about four grand and let you guys see it launch on the trans brake. Again, we're not gonna hook up. It's not gonna do nothing but spin, but it sounds badass. And that's what we're gonna be working on on the track. On the next coming races that we do, we're gonna be starting the trans brake launch the truck. And uh, we're gonna have to figure out our suspension, that's for sure, but that's what we're working on. So I'm gonna back up, let you guys see a trans brake launch from outside the truck. Everybody's having an awesome time out there. I know it has been a minute since I've uploaded the video. We're going on about two weeks. And I have been extremely busy with work, work, and more work. Uh, it has been absolutely crazy. But today's video, I'm gonna do basically kind of like an update on Frostbite and a walk around. A lot of people's been asking me to do another walk around since everything's changed. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start the truck up and we're gonna do a full walk around of the outside of the truck while it's running, under the hood, inside the uh, truck, and uh, let you guys hear it, check it out. And then I'm gonna go into detail. A lot of people's been wanting to know how the shifter works from Cope Racing um, and the transmission. And uh, so we're gonna kinda go over how the shifter works. And uh, I might even do a little small trans brake test right here, just kinda show you guys how the button, what buttons does what and how it works and the whole nine. So, hell yeah, let's get to this badass walk around.
right guys so here we go we are in the side of the truck and we're going to go over the uh, PPP shifter that I got from Cope Racing and the buttons how it works what I got to do and just kind of like go over the whole thing so how we have my truck set up right now is my truck will start only in neutral that's why you see it's already in neutral right now um, so my truck will start in neutral that's how we wired it up it starts in neutral only it does not start in park right now we have it set up to start in neutral um, so I have to be in neutral to start my truck and then I can put it in park and let it sit do whatever um, but that is how I have to start my truck so if we have this shifter in neutral the truck will start and I can go to any gear, forward or backwards, whatever I want to do from there. Now, how this thing works. So we're going to go to park. And uh, there you go. You see park. So if I want to go to neutral, i got to push down the button here. Push the handle in front where you see my fingers. That would be neutral. If I want to go to first, same thing. That's first. Now, if we're actually driving the truck or racing the truck or whatever... Um, to go to the rest to go through the rest of the gears and keep in mind the 46 re is a four-speed transmission and I did the overdrive dilly so we have an actual overdrive and that is what this button right here does we will go over that in a second but right now we're in first gear so we're gonna pretend we're driving or racing whatever and it's time to shift then all we got to do is pull back and we are in second gear as you can see the indicator makes a very cool bad ass sound if you ask me i love the sound the shifter makes so if it's time to go to third gear same thing we're just going to pull back and now we're in third gear and if we want to go to fourth gear same thing we are in fourth gear now when we're in fourth gear and say we're going to be cruising on the highway for a little while or we're going you know down a road and we're going to get over 45 50 miles an hour and we want to lock up the converter we will hit this button right here and then that activates my converter and the converter will lock the rpms will drop down and we will be cruising you know about 65 70 miles an hour in this truck right now uh, with the with the converter locked in fourth gear um, i'm just at about 2000 rpm maybe a hair over that it cruises very well um, I'm, I'm actually very impressed with the cruising ability with you know going from a five speed transmission down to a four speed transmission it didn't really lose a lot on the highway it still cruises just as good as it did um, if not better honestly so the other thing there's two lights right here and one light indicates the lockup for the torque converter lockup and then the other light indicates the trans brake this is the trans brake right here this red button here so I'm gonna go to neutral real quick <clears throat> and I'm just going to put the key in. We're going to have to hear the door, uh, the door ding in here for a second. But as you see, I have a green light LED right here, and that's because we activated the converter a second ago. So the converter is unlocked. I'm going to lock it again, and we have a green light. Um, so if that green light's on, you know the converter's locked. If it's off, obviously it's off. Now, with this being a full manual valve body, if the converter is locked, and you come you know you start to slow down you get to a stop sign or a red light um, and the truck's slowing down you come to a stop and if your converter is locked if i have the converter locked this thing will completely die it acts just like if you had a standard transmission or a manual transmission and um, say you have it in gear and you forget to press in the clutch when you come to a stop the same thing applies to an automatic transmission when you have a manual valve body and a separate torque converter lockup switch like this. Uh, before you stop, you have to remember to unlock the converter if you had it locked. Um, so it's nice to have a little uh, light right there, especially if it's dark, you can see that light very well. And then the trans brake, if we were going to use the trans brake, and if I press the trans brake, you'll see it lights up red on the LED right here. If I let go, it goes off if I press it it lets you know the trans brake is engaged um, and the trans brake is basically used for first gear only um, to go forward and launch now the other thing a lot of people want to know okay you see my neutral and my reverse 
is the same place on the shifter, okay? Neutral and reverse is the same, except for if I want to go into reverse on my truck with this transmission with a manual valve body, reverse manual valve body with a trans brake. Reverse is right here, as you see, where the neutral and reverse section is. But when I press the trans brake in the neutral position right here, it actually engages reverse gear. Um, that is how it works. So I have to press the trans brake button and hold it to retain reverse gear. And as soon as I let go of the trans brake button, the transmission goes right back into neutral. And that is how reverse works. I will kind of show you. I'm going to start the truck. It's going to be very loud, so I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me. But I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, I'm going to start the truck. We're in neutral right now. Right now, I'm going to let off. If I let off the brake, we're going to roll. No, maybe not. We're not rolling at all. So that works out great. So we're in neutral. And if I press the trans brake button, you're going to see that the truck is going to kind of bump and start to go backwards. So here we go. That is reverse right there. If I give it some gas, you see we went backwards. So that is how it works. Pretty neat. I'm going to do it again. We're neutral. If I press the button, that's reverse. Let's go. We're neutral. So hopefully that kind of whoops. Hopefully that kind of helps you guys out a little bit of how the reverse uh, works on the reverse manual valve body with a trans brake. That is how it works. Um, again, reverse and neutral is the same spot on the shifter pattern. But when you're in the neutral position and you press the trans brake button, that is your reverse gear. And as long as you're holding it down, you're in reverse. When you let go, it goes right into neutral. Um, pretty neat. It's a little weird to get used to, but I actually love it. And uh, I have found it's very simple because you can be backing up and uh, when you're ready to go, you just let go of the button and you're in neutral and you throw it in, in, the throat in the first gear and you're ready to go. Um, so I'm going to show you how the trans brake works real quick. i um, not going to really launch it right here because this road is going to suck and we're not going to go anywhere. We're just going to spin. But I'm going to show you how it works, what you have to do, and we'll do a small little launch and let you guys check it out. So we're going to be putting the truck in first gear. We're going to be pressing the button right here and holding it, and you will see the truck will, will stay completely put. This thing will not move at all. And as soon as I let go of the button, all hell breaks loose, and we go forward in a very quick manner. So I'm going to shut the door. I'm going to let my camera guy get real close to the truck right here. Kind of get over here at an angle if you can. There you go. And I'm going to start the truck up again. Where my keys go? Back up just a little bit right there that way. There you go. All right, so we're in neutral. I'm going to put the truck in first gear. See the shifter right here? See the shifter and everything? Right there, you're good. Good. All right. All right. So we're in first gear, and if I let off the brake, you're going to see we're going to roll a little bit right there. So I'm going to mash the trans brake button right now. As you see, the lights engaged. I'm going to take my foot off of the brake, and the truck is going to stay put. I can floor the gas pedal right now if I want to, and this truck will not move at all. I'll show you. That was 5,000 RPM and we didn't even flinch. So I'm gonna hold it down to about 2,000. I'm gonna let go of the button right now. Watch my thumb. And that's pretty much how it works. Very, very simple. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna let my camera guy get back and I'm gonna drop this thing at about four grand and let you guys see it launch on the trans brake. Again, we're not gonna hook up, it's not gonna do nothing to spin, but it sounds badass, and that's what we're gonna be working on on the track on the next coming races that we do. We're gonna be starting to trans brake launch the truck. And uh, we're gonna have to figure out a
water suspension, that's for sure, but that's what we're working on. So I'm going to back up and let you guys see a trans brake launch from outside the truck. turn the truck off for a second so you can hear me better um it's running right off the long tubes guys we haven't put the exhaust back on since we did the transmission swap and uh that's another story and another day with the exhaust i got an idea for my exhaust i want to do and it's gonna be badass um but back on topic i want to show you the newest thing that we added which i'm going to be doing a video and an uh an actual kind of a better go over on this on this uh new gizmo that i got from holly um let me see the camera real quick guy so I have a little shift light right here, okay? This is a Holly Sniper shift light. It's very small, it's awesome. Um, this thing is very programmable and very, very easy to use. And again, I'm gonna do a separate video for this thing and go over it a little better. So if you're interested in it and you wanna know more about it, just stay tuned and I'm gonna be doing a video on this shift light by itself. But right now, I wanna show you something. So we have it set to 6,000 uh, shift points right now. So at 6,000 RPM, the amber light will light up and let me know when it's time to shift. It also has a launch control um, on it as well. And right now, if, if I remember, I think we have it set for like 3,000. Um, I'm gonna let you see that real quick. I'm gonna start the truck up and put it in first gear again. I'm gonna active, I'm gonna engage the trans brake and act like I'm at the tree at the drag strip and we're gonna I'll show you the, the RPM gauge and everything. We're going to hold the RPMs up with the trans brake and let you see the shift light where my launch control is. So this will light up at about 3,000, um, which is where I think I have it set. And you can set it for any RPM. And when it lights up, it lets you know, okay, that's your RPM that you want to launch at. And you just try to hold the, you know, hold your RPM right there. Obviously, when I get a two-step, which is coming, next thing to do is... Um, this will be even easier to use but let me crank this thing up real quick so we are gonna put it in first all right we're gonna hit the trans brake button up here on top you see the red light just came on so the truck won't go anywhere and let me back up a little bit so you can see the rpm gauge all right so i'm gonna give it some gas and you'll see the sniper shift light should come on when I hit about 3,000. So there you go, that's 3,000 right there. And I wanna show you something real quick, guys. This is a five grand converter. This stall converter in this truck is five grand. And I'm gonna demonstrate that real quick. If you watch my RPM gauge, I'm gonna hold the trans brake button down and I want you to check this out. So here you go, five grand. Yeah, get you some of that. So there you go. That's kind of how it works in a nutshell. Um, we will do some better driving videos with this. It's really hard to do a video in the truck right now with the exhaust. It's, it's just so loud inside the cabin, guys, that it cuts the, the audio to the videos very much. And it, it's just hard to talk and do a video inside the truck. So when I get my exhaust ran the way I want it, um, we're going to do a lot more videos on driving the truck down the street going through the gears and everything 
and just how all how all of it works it's it's very simple it's it's so simple and awesome I, it's hard to describe but it's it's badass um, my son wants me to do another five grand trans brake uh, hold and let you hear the truck when it's sitting on the converter at like five grand on the trans brake it sounds hellacious especially in this little spot we're in so I'm gonna have him back up and we're gonna hold it down again someone honk at us so that is pretty much what's going on with frostbite she's running she's working there's nothing wrong with it um, I just been super busy guys like I said work 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 and more work it's been nuts tomorrow we are going to caffeine at the drags and it's gonna be pretty badass I've never been there it's the first time they've done this it's basically a huge car show with some drag racing now it's gonna be an eighth mile drag race which is weird I've never raced on an eighth mile track but this is on Atlanta Motor Speedways where they're going to be doing the racing. And it's in pit row. And it's a legit eighth mile, you know, times and everything. And there's going to be some super crazy cars there. There should be a little bit of everything. Probably some Lambos, some, you know, super cars. Who knows? I would love to get next to a Lambo and hopefully let Frostbite wax a Lambo in the eighth mile. That would be absolutely insane. So I'm hoping that can make that happen. I don't know. We'll see. But that's the plan tomorrow. We're heading down to Atlanta Motor Speedway for an awesome car show, some drag racing, and all kinds of other stuff. So we'll be running the truck. Um, I'm going to be getting some more data. We're going to bump the RPMs up a little bit for the shift points. Um, I haven't even talked about this yet, but the meth injection, you know, we've been running the meth injection again lately, and we've actually changed it up. We're running 100% meth right now. Uh, me and Justin Baker which is Dr. Differential and Speed Shop. He's the one currently tuning the truck, and that's his camshaft. This is the Enforcer camshaft that's in the truck right now. A lot of you guys know that. So if you don't, that's his camshaft. That's what it sounds like. I love it. It sounds awesome. The cam definitely hits hard, and I am in love with the camshaft and how the truck sounds now. But we're gonna try to get some data tomorrow. Um, we're tuning it on 100% meth. We're trying to start get a little more aggressive with the tuning with it and shifting higher RPM. You know, we are trying to turn the truck up, that's for sure. You know, like I said, the last time I went to the track, we actually beat my J Green, uh, my fastest pass I had on the J Green tune and J Green camshaft before I changed the transmission. We beat my time on the J Green cam and tune by a little bit, but I beat the time in summer heat i had i think it was like an 1800 almost 2000 da where and it was full weight um my fastest j green time and with the camshaft and everything was last winter it was right before the track closed up and i had the truck gutted we had no passenger seat we had pretty much all the interior removed except for the driver's seat and we ran like 11 6 and change i was able to beat that time now with the trans with the coat racing transmission and Dr. Differential's camshaft and tuning, I was able to beat that time in the summer heat. So I'm super stoked, guys. When, when winter gets here and the DA gets down to a zero uh, or even negative, this truck is going to be hella fast, especially with us starting to turn things up and uh, kind of work through, you know, just getting the bugs out of everything, getting it working right. Uh, you know, with the trans brake, we're going to start working on the rear suspension. You know, we have adjustable shocks up front right now from QA1, and we got the rears, but I'm thinking about going pretty crazy with the rear end. I'm thinking about doing a, a coilover, a weld-in coilover kit for the back. So I'm thinking about ditching the stock springs and doing a weld-in coilover kit so we can have full adjustability with the rear end of the truck. I think that'll help us a lot with the trans brake. You know, the trans brake launches very violently, especially when you're trying to launch it you know above 3000 rpm which is what i really want to do um, but we're going to have to 
we're gonna have to give the old rear end a little bit of love to uh, take that hit on the tire, especially with, you know, right now we have the, the Mickey Thompson ET Street R radials and probably a, probably a slick, you know, a full slick would probably be a better idea with the, with the trans brake. It would probably mush the tire, flex the tire a little bit better, kind of soften up that hit maybe. Um, so a little bit of everything going through my mind, guys. You know, we may have to change tires. We're definitely going to have to play with the rear end, the suspension some. But the truck is there, guys. The truck is there. The equipment's there. Um, you know, motor, we're still a stock block 5.7 with a camshaft. Stock pistons, stock rods, stock crank, stock everything except for camshaft. Stock heads, stock throttle body, stock 5.7 intake manifold. Like, we have a lot of stuff we could put on the motor still if we wanted to get some more power. Um, so, there's a lot to do. And, uh, hey, we're going to get there. We're going to get it done. Um, but, obviously, the next thing on my list, too, is going to be building up the, the motor. You know, I thought about just doing drop-in pistons and rods. I kind of like the idea of staying with a 5.7. One, parts are cheaper. Um, anytime you stroke a motor, every part's going to be more expensive. You know, pistons, rods is going to be more expensive. Um, and I kind of like the idea of staying a 5.7, you know, if you stay with a smaller displacement, you know, you're, if you're running boost, turbo, supercharger, whatever, um, smaller displacement, you're going to retain and make boost quicker and it's going to hold the boost a little better, a little better. Obviously with a bigger motor, more stroke, more, you know, more volume in them cylinders and everything, your, you know, your supercharger your turbo has to build more pressure, has to build up more boost to fill all that volume. Um, so it's kind of a catch-22 but i like the idea of staying with a 5.7 um i'm pr that's probably where i'm leaning to i don't i don't again nothing set in stone i don't know exactly what we're going to do yet but i kind of like the idea of staying with the 5.7 and letting it eat put some good parts in it and just send it down the damn track that's my idea so we'll see what's up but hope you enjoyed the video hope uh that kind of gives everybody a little small rundown of how everything works with the transmission and the setup that i got going on right now from cope racing and dr differential and speed shop and torque storm superchargers so that pretty much lets you see what's going on with everything and uh as always guys stay safe out there don't forget to uh hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys on the next one peace